I got inspired to learn how to make watercolors when I was in Peru and got to learn how they make dyes or fabric out of plants and bugs. So when I got home, I started researching how to make paint. Most paint is made out of two main components, a binder and a pigment. The binder is what binds the pigment to the canvas or whatever you're painting on. The pigment is what gives the paint its color. Pigments are usually made out of ground up rocks and minerals. And for this project, I wanted to collect all the rocks for myself. So I had to decide what colors I wanted and then figure out where I could naturally find these colors. Uh, I wanted to at least make the three primary colors, red, yellow, and blue. And it turns out Utah has a lot of minerals that I could use to make these colors. The first color I wanted to make was blue, so I went to Mount Topaz to find some azurite. I also found some malachite that was forming around the azurite, which can be used to make a nice green color. The next color I made was some yellow from some yellow ochre I had found on a camping trip in Moab, and I already had red from some red jasper that I had collected before this project. The next thing I needed to do was find a way to grind my rocks into a super fine powder. The process that I found to work the best was grinding the rocks with a mortar and pestle and gently rinsing the finer powder out into a separate container and letting it dry. And then I needed to make a binder for my watercolors. This was the hardest part of the project because everyone has their own recipe for binder and they don't like to tell people what it is because it's the only thing that makes their paint unique. But the one thing everyone says is in their paint is gum arabic, which is a resin from certain kinds of acacia trees. And other common ingredients are honey and glycerin and some kind of antimicrobial oil like clove oil. The gum arabic is water soluble but dries to have a hard smooth finish. The honey and glycerin keep the paint from cracking and make it less brittle and flaky. The clove oil keeps the paint from molding because it has natural ingredients like gum arabic and honey. The recipe that I came up with that's worked the best for me is one and a half cups of gum arabic powder, two cups of boiled distilled water, it's still hot, two tablespoons glycerin, two tablespoons honey, and two drops of clove oil. To combine the pigment and the binder, you need to mix them together in a process called mulling, where you smear the paint around in between two smooth surfaces like marble or glass. This just mixes the pigment and the binder much better than if you just mix them together. As you mold the paint, it gets smoother and more opaque, and the color gets richer, as the particles of pigment get mixed more evenly throughout the binder. Once you're done mulling the paint, you need to put it into a paint pan and then let it dry out very slowly over a couple weeks so that it doesn't crack. The paint that I ended up with was below average, but I think I learned a lot and the next paint I make will be even better. I had a lot of fun making it and I think I might have even found a new hobby for myself.